another SmackDown review. Ew, I don't want to see this in the street. Treat it like a witch back in the Silver Era. Well, uh, intense storylines going over the show, mainly revolving around Roman Reigns. Literally, the entire thing is literally uh, the any other asshole's review of SmackDown. Oh, SmackDown's better because it's consumable and has Roman Reigns. That means it's an overall better product. It's just a B show of a good world champion. That's about it. Uh, I I try my best to be as uh you know positive as possible. Bring over my critiques whenever even watching the show. But by God, it sucks when like people just have this intense uh, positive over the show, even though it's really not. SmackDown is just easier to watch. No one said that it was good. If it was compared to something from like 09 SmackDown, you would blow it down the water. So, the most important thing was drama revolving around the Usos, uh, especially Jimmy, retaining some semblance of respect for Roman. That's been revolving around the show, even consistent whenever we had more action. So, when it was Apollo and Sami Zayn that didn't even get their, uh, no, Sami Zayn didn't get his entrance against Owens and Big E. And Big E, he's not a main eventer, bro. He's not. Uh, Jesus. They literally had a, in, just an innate promo segment after they literally had one over the first seven minutes of the show involving, Ro involving Jimmy, like, like going over Roman Reigns saying it's all about him since we were kids, saying that's not about seeing how you're abusing Jay. Literally had a seven minute vignette, a seven minute promo. Fine. Then they just had it again. I understand you don't you want your major main event storyline revolting around the show. Good on you. I don't mind doing that. But chill whenever there's a break. There is several matches around the show that can get through other storylines. You can wait until the match or segment is done. Like, no one gives a crap. Holy shit. Like, I've seen, like, oh, SmackDown's better. They don't know how to structure basic outros, intros, or transition to promo to match. Like, it's... Like, nobody's ever questioning how the production even transitions for that type of stuff. And it just... And it gets agitating. So we also had a tag team match that I just talked about. That was in our opener. And it took us 30 minutes until we had two matches. 30 minutes. So... Owens won with the stunner. After... After uh, Big E clotheslined Apollo out the match, it was an average tag team match. There was nothing, not that much to really convey right there other than Sammy feeling displeased after Apollo said that he would challenge for both of Big E and Kevin Owens because they didn't really pin him. Then Aziz, after Sammy technically spoke out of turn, hits the Nigerian nail. Or that sounds like another euthanism for black penis, but uh, I'm not going to go there. That's what it sounds like. I'm just going to keep it how it is. Average match, forgettable segment. Sami Zayn just got, uh, just got a thumb thrusted up his throat. Like, it's the most non knockout move ever, and yet it's like the most, uh, it's like getting punched in the dick. It's like getting kicked in the dick. Like it hurts, but it goes away. It's n sure like a more devastating hit can like make you see see your brain, but it's not gonna be that devastating. Uh. Liv Morgan and Car uh, Carmella, and Carmella beat her last week, so of course 50-50 booking conveys, and Liv picks up the win of con uh, the Oblivion, the Oblivion, get it? Off the middle rope, it's a, it's just a second rope flatliner, there is consistent, like, Dumb crap involvement. Like, Carmella is not that attractive as Liv Morgan. Let's get that straight. Like, she keeps trying to harass and try to, like, fall over. I swear, I think there was a spot where even Liv Morgan fell over the cameraman. They were trying to sell it over as Carmella being... Like, I like the entrance. I like the look. 
Carmel is just not that hot to me. Now, that's just my opinion. I'm sure to many other stands, because you know that WWE isn't that mainstream anymore, instead of like regular people saying, oh, this girl needs to be in a magazine like Trish Stratus. No, they're going to be like, uh, yeah, Carmella gets another stand. Like, uh, dude, she's not that hot. We know that they're going to keep wrestling over the mid-card and it's not going to go on pay-per-view. Then we had a ding-dong hello segment. I can't wait for this talk show garbage to die. You could be doing, like, rip-off radio show things. Like, doing, like, you guys don't need to do these in-ring segments in the ring when there's nobody in front to hear it. Now, sometimes it can be an important announcement, and you can cut it over with a promo involving some of the stars, and that's fine. It makes it more impromptu. But when you have it scheduled, it feels kind of stupid. Because people can already watch it over on TV because nobody else can come live until SummerSlam. And I guess was Rollins, and Rollins keeps with this pink, tilt-tinted, white suit, Looks like he just came out the closet, then got punched back in. But Seth Rollins looks like he's getting ready for a fucking parrot funeral. He looks awful. All right, let's just, like stop with the suits. Like sometimes wearing custom made suits are supposed to make you feel entrepreneurial, like higher level, or at least a bit more of a creative looking fellow. You know, above a person when you're whenever you're a pro wrestler. Same thing that they do for hockey. Sometimes what they do for the NBA, even though most NBA players nowadays, they don't come around looking professional. They keep looking like what 20, 21-year-olds think they should dress like, even though most of these men would be in their 20s to 30s. And it's just looking so stupid. And then and it's like they laughed when they saw be, uh, Cesaro got beaten up, curb stomp. They took like an awkward pause over and laughed. Then he went over on, I'm trying to get the art to my sign. He keeps Messy with the Messiah, Cesaro came off the door and assaulted uh, Rollins until, like, the aftermath of getting wrecked over and Rollins were cheating. Bianca Belair just laughed at her face, like, hey, you're the what kind of little kid garbage is that? Someone explain to me why this is, like, good. Please to explain. What's the emphasis of giving these organized, edited lists, even though these these characters obviously suck. Bailey sucks. Looks like Jay Leno wearing a dead furry on her head. Sucks. Bailey sucks ass. This whole segment involving Bianca Belair acting like a little girl, like laughing at a girl that effed up on a project. Like, it's not good. That was a bad segment. So Rollins came around looking like more of a lower mid Carter over this minuscule feud that's still making Cesaro not even do what he's supposed to be doing if he wanted if he wanted him to be in the top of the card anyway. And guess what? His ass is going back to Claudio Castanoli. Yeah, no, like no charisma at sight here. How long they've been feuding for like three months now? Montez Ford defeated Chad Gable. Over DQ over Otis attacking forward after a pretty all right match. Like there are some average back and forth. I like the catch. Uh, Northern Light suplex. There was a clothesline. Of uh, running, like I need them to stop double cross body. It, it, it gets really agitating, repetitive at times, especially when like it's just a break move. Like back in the day, I think 2015, where everybody started doing a superplex. They just break it so they can set up. It, it, it gets a bit agitating, and it came over the crappy segment trying to make, like, the, like, the, like, the, her, like, the Street Profits more cooler. Like, I don't know why, but Otis looks like Butch Magnus from the Boondocks, and that's not what you're supposed to be looking like. He looks like if Butch Magnus aged 20 years later and got, and shaved and, cha and changed into Christianity and became a truck driver. That's what he looks like. Sorry to put that all in your membrane, but that's what happened. And it's like, Otis is angry. Like, you're trying to sell over Otis is angry. Why didn't he have a wrestling match if you were selling over Otis being more dangerous than you? And then ending it over in a DQ so they can have this shitty feud. I forgot that the Mysterios are the tag team champions. And this is selling over the front after last week after uh, Dominic and Ray got his ass kicked. And they keep selling over. I'm going to talk with Roman and announce what's going to happen. 
So the selling point is trying to push over another personal feud whenever Dominic gets his ass kicked. Ray gets a world title push. Same thing would happen back in 2019. I'm not saying that it's not bad having Ray in the, in the main event scene, but it just feels this inorganic, and it's already rushed over because I know they're trying to intertwine this with the Usos drama. That's practically the only reason to watch. If you're watching because of Nakamura and Corbin having seven matches against each other, or the repeat repetitive feuds with Rollins and Cesaro, I'm sorry, man. It's just not a good show. There's some bits and pieces that are all right, but other than that, if you can't make even a throwback episode, even look good. And you're like, oh, the excuse is trying to make it like the Thunderdome. You make it a retro show. It doesn't matter. People can already watch it on TV. Thunderdome does not change the atmosphere of anything. Shinsuke lost to Corbin over a roll-up. How many of these matches ended over a roll-up? Or Nakamura just winning the... Like, or just running over Boogs, gets an interference, so they take the crown, rinse and repeat, it's the same goddamn storyline. The only person that comes around looking good is the only person with muscle tone. And that's Rick Boogs. How's that a good thing? And it's like, he keeps, this is loitering, the, the, he's taking my crown, Corbin sucks, I don't know why. No, and no disrespect to the revolution. Shout out to him. Big commenter on the channel for the last couple of weeks. Always love his opinion. Uh, I just disagree with one of them, and that's just like the the likability of Corbin. Like, there's no emphasis in Corbin being a star. He has love handles, looks like a cancer patient, and probably still eats burgers, even though he's a pro wrestler. He has no charisma. And he's shown over having a king gimmick for over a year that he can't really transition into anything else. He sucks in the NFL and he sucks at pro wrestling. Imagine that type of combination. Van Vader was an NFL player. He was good in Japan and he was good in the United States. He's a Hall of Famer. Even though he looks like a tub of muscle and lard. That man could possibly rip off my head if I pissed him off and called wrestling fake. Corbin looks like I would get a piss up. I would get him pissed off if I got the wrong vape raw, uh, the wrong vape flavor. And they ended it off again with another roll up. Nakamura needs to stop. He looks like if old boy came out the closet. I'm sick and tired of this feud. I'm sick and tired of this. We're gonna end it over with this last segment involving, uh, he. There first there was Jimmy telling Roman, hey, "You need to get in our locker room." Oh, you mean his locker room or Roman's cousins? locker room. Obviously trying to uh, devalue over and manipulate saying that you haven't gotten anywhere without me and I'm trying to do this for the family. It was, it was a good segment. I'll give it that. It's a good segment. It was a great promo involving Jimmy and Jay and trying to emphasize the feud and at least raise their to at least make more emotions fly, but it just feels like the authority figures are not there to even like consist the point of making this feel more dramatic. And I feel like the authority figures like, can, because they're, like, that order to, like, shatter, to make the chaos feel more impactful. I feel like authority figures really lost our mark in the WWE over the years, and this happened. Uh, like, Jesus. So, after that, Ray, Ray called out Roman, and Ray says, I acknowledge you as a guy who beat, beat the shit out of my son and me. And it's the rat bastard that I want for the world title. And many people has already disagreed that this is going to be a Hell in a Cell match. It's going to be a Hell in a Cell match either way. They're going to have three bullshit Hell in a Cell matches that are never going to tell a story. Be the end game of anything because we know that we have still stuff to do before we head back over on tour. And most of these assholes are going to get released because they know they can't draw a dime. So, emphasizing all this point, all these gimmick pay-per-view shits, devaluing all the match stipulations that we love, like the Elimination Chamber, Hell in the Cell, and Royal Rumble, the, all of them are, are con contrivably dead. And whenever you guys even do a return for the Women's r Rumble, oh, Edge comes back? N forgot what spot happened. I hate all these gimmick pay-per-views. Because they just devalue the point of even these stars even being in these types of matches. And then Ray comes out of nowhere with a kendo stick. Even I, even Pat McAfee questioned where the kendo stick came from. Roman Reigns would get the upper hand. Superman punched Ray. Dominic would come surprisingly with a couple 
with a couple of kendo shots, and then get power bomb literally out the ring. I would have loved to see that more wide out of a shot to just show how brutal it was, and it could have gotten more heat for Roman power bombing Ray's son. To be honest, I know that sounds sadistic, but that also sounds brutal, and it actually ends the show on a high note. And most shows barely do this anymore after that shit fest we had on Raw. And that's practically it. Re Roman gets escorted off the entrance, and Ray cares for his son. This has gotten personal. At least to an obvious note, but I don't think this should be a hell in the cell. It should just be a basic, unsanctioned or street fight. Because this barely had as enough enough build, other than, he beat up my son? Like, Rey Mysterio is the last person I would hear to be in a Hell in a Cell match unless it involves Batista. That's the only thing that make a lot more sense to me. But just emphasizing this point and just the amount of drama that they have to do, I guess it's the only way they're going to actually make sure this match is interesting. But, uh, by God, it just feel like this is underwhelming. But, uh, that's it for the review. Thank God. The only positive about SmackDown is when it hit 11 o'clock. I'm sorry. <laughs> when it hit 10 o'clock. And then the best thing about Dynamite is when it had to hit 12. So, that's it coming from me. Thanks for watching. And enjoy in your house. Now, I'm not talking about the pay-per-view. I'm talking about being in your house. Because you guys are stuck there. <laughs>